If you're in the digital marketing space, then chances are you know who Ahrefs are. It's, um, to put it simply, it's an SEO tool. It, it's been around for a really, really long time, actually. It's one of the older SEO tools, very much focused on, on backlinking and understanding how your website connects to others. Really popular and a good tool. Today, however, um, the guys at Ahrefs have come out with an incredible announcement that they're now planning to launch their own search engine. So it's a real poacher-turned-gamekeeper-type scenario. What the guys at Ahrefs are saying is going to be different about that search engine are, are two big things. The first is privacy. So they're riffing a little here on DuckDuckGo's playbook. They're talking about not using as much of your search data for targeting. So yes, if you search for blue denim jacket, they're going to show you adverts from people showing blue denim jacket. But what they're not going to do is hang on to that data in the long term and build up a profile of you as an individual who might like blue denim jackets and banana shaped hats or, or something of that nature. So that's something we've already seen with a lot of search engines and Google have already talked about how they're planning to change their, their use of data. So that's not necessarily that that special. The other thing they're talking about, which is incredibly relevant given changes in EU or you know, the EU's position um, this week on, on copyright law, is that they're planning to take 90% of the revenue they make from those pay-per-click ads and pass it back to publishers. So this is a big shift um, and very much in line with what the EU have announced this week, um, what went through in terms of changes to copyright law, where it's no longer going to be free, in inverted commas, for Google and other search engines to scrape a whole load of information from your website and effectively hijack that data, effectively use it for their own for their own purposes. So if you're a Google user, you will probably have already seen these inline answer cards. So this is where you search for a piece of information online. So what's the boiling point of water? And instead of getting the first result as the Wikipedia article for water, you just get a straight answer. You just get the boiling point of water is 100 degrees centigrade. Um, Google weren't the first people to create that. We obviously had that kind of natural language processing um, question and answer type search with things like Ask Jeeves, um, for anyone who's old enough to remember that. Um, and then Wolfram Alpha was another search engine that, that tried to, to do the same thing. But neither of these captured the, the imagination or captured them in the market in the way that Google has. So Google have effectively begun um, a process. They've been doing it for quite a while. This isn't new. But they've begun this process where they keep the user in their own environment. And a lot of people have been really, really um, upset about this. So Wikipedia lost a lot of traffic because of this. And one of the metrics that I saw recently was that now one in three searches on Google doesn't generate a click at all. Now, it's pretty much beyond the bounds of conception that one in three people who search Google don't find what they want. Google would be hemorrhaging, uh, you know, they would be hemorrhaging market cap massively. You know, they'd be losing their space as, as the number one search engine. What's actually far more likely to be happening is people are searching for information, Google's giving them that information, and they no longer need to drill down into any of these other sites. Of course, where's Google getting the vast majority of this information? Yeah, it's not from their own sources, it's not from their own databases, it's been scraped up from the web. So the EU have now made this big change and effectively it's no longer going to be free for companies like Google to do this. Hyperlinking is fine, so hyperlinks with the, the little embedded form of hyperlink with the description, the image and all that stuff, that's absolutely fine. There was a huge amount of concern, obviously, um, in the tech community, in the digital marketing community, that there was going to be some kind of hyperlink tax. Um, that's not the case. But what it is no longer going to be possible for the search engines to, to do, unless they can find a, a legal or technical workaround to it, is just take information from other sites and reuse it without permission. So Ahrefs are trying to get ahead of the curve here. I think they're trying to be a little bit cute and a little bit clever and say, hey, you know, we're going to build this in from the ground up while Google and others are still trying to work out, you know, exactly how to, how to do this, how to make this thing, this thing work. So 
it's an interesting announcement. Um, the SEO community seems to be pretty pretty split on this at the moment. Some people are saying this is huge. It, it's going to be the next big thing. Obviously, Ahrefs already has a, have a massive uh, database of of websites and, and cross indexing. So they're they're certainly not starting from scratch in terms of data for their search engine. Other people are kind of saying, yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting for those of us in the community. It's interesting if you're a techie, it's interesting if you're a marketer, but to the average consumer, it's going to be kind of like, nah, you know, why, why would we change our search engine? Why would we, why would we bother? So I think if this is going to work, it's really going to have to come from content creators and publishers. It's going to come down to people to push this to their own communities so it's it's going to come down to the the bloggers effectively and it's going to come right back down to the grassroots i think for people to be saying hey if you came to me via ahrefs I, you know, i'd have got paid i'd have got paid for this um instead you know because you've come via google i haven't um it wouldn't take google much to to really replicate this um and obviously they, they've got the the war chest to probably be able to afford to do it um but the difference is of course that Google shareholders are used to Google getting all the money for those clicks and kind of keeping it. They're not used to Google having to, to pay out um, to all content creators for the, the stuff they're linking to. So this is going to be a very interesting space, I think, now with search engines over the next couple of years as this, this law rolls out um it, it, there's a two-year window for the eu countries to, to actually implement this and obviously we had some pretty crazy stuff coming from from google about you know shutting down services like google news um if if this went through i don't think that will happen the the google news interface is too ingrained um into things like google assistant and the, the pop-up cards that you're probably used to getting on your on your android phone by now so i don't think that will will happen we may see some legal challenges to it as we've seen to, to changes um, in legislation and, and regulation in the past. Or we may see, we may see a shift from from Google and other search engines, of course, to say, yeah, you know, we, we get it. We've made a lot of money out of indexing the web, but without content creators, without publishers, there's no web at all. So let's let's sort of try and find a, let's try and find a rebalancing, if you like, of that position. So a very, very interesting announcement. Um, would it surprise me if a year from now someone said to me, hey, do you remember that, that little podcast you put out about Ahrefs? What the heck happened to that? I'd be to say, oh, yeah, it didn't go anywhere. No, it wouldn't. Um, but what I think it's indicative of is that for the first time in a long time, the tectonic plates of the search engine landscape are, are starting to shift. Um, Google have recently acquiesced to changing chrome so that you've got a more ability to change your your search engine there um, that will inevitably with the the overlap between android and chrome and chromium inevitably eventually i think hit hit the android mobile phone space as, as well so i think what you're seeing as i say is, is this tectonic shift for the first time in a long time you know, google's almost unassailable monopoly people are starting to look at this and say do you know what they may be just maybe there's some room to steal a few percentage points away from Google on this one. Maybe there's room for another player in the in the marketplace. Um, as, as someone who does a lot of work with SEO and digital marketing, I'd love to have another search engine of real relevance to talk about um, other than Google. You know, 200 plus pages of the truth about SEO. And I think I've typed the word Google about a billion times when I was writing that. Um, but the size of their the size of their market share speaks for speaks for itself. Um, I've been saying for a long time that diversification is is going to be key in the future. Um, I, it it looks like that is is really coming to pass. You know we're we're going to see new search engines, um, and I think we're also going to see some some existing search engines that have been bubbling under the surface um, potentially really come to prominence. Um, being has a chance. Um, DuckDuckGo, I think, actually has a has a stronger chance with its with its privacy focus and its sort of message. I think it could actually be the uh, the, the one to watch. So, interesting times. Um, definitely good luck to the guys at Ahrefs because they they've picked a they have picked a big big fight there. Um, so watch this space, and obviously we'll be back with with more news as and when that happens.